So yeah, this is the next video in my thankfulness uh, series. And this time I am going to be talking about the porn people, the sex workers. And it kind of is like, this is just hard to talk about because like, I can't really do full on reacts here because in some cases I've like done all their scenes already. Or in other cases, I just like haven't done this stuff yet and I like want to save it for that. Or in some yet other cases, it's just really hard to like integrate something in this video without it like detracting and becoming something else. And I'd like to keep this really pure and like simple because these people have been incredible and I want to just focus on them. So yeah, let's get into this. Yes, like the easiest way to get into this would be to talk about my history with people in porn. So like, I started reacting to porn videos like late last year with uh, Tale of Two Cock Destroyers. And honestly, I wasn't expecting much from it. I just thought the premise was so fucking gold, I had to do it. And I didn't even think I would ever like do anything else with porn after that. But I watched those scenes, I watched two of them, because I started my uh, vlogmas, and that like took over, and I never did the last two scenes until later when I mashed both of them together for a Ty Mitchell react. But yeah, I did the two scenes, and I enjoyed it, I loved it, I uploaded it, not really expecting much. First of all, they blew up, because I had Med.com, I had Cock Destroyers, I had porn written everywhere, I had... Ty Mitchell's name, I had, you know, everyone in there, so it blew up that sense, obviously. But then, like, actually Ty Mitchell was sharing it and saying that he liked it, and that, like, ah! And I, like, that was, like, one of the things that spurred me to do more porn reacts, along with the fact that, like, um, Cooper, and they're one of the other people I follow in porn, and... They actually are someone I followed, like, so far back. I think I remember before they started their OnlyFans. And definitely before they signed on to Cocky Boys. But Cooper talked about um, A Murdered Heart as kind of like a tasteless, bad concept. Because they have actually been through the conversion camp process and, like, were scarred from it and traumatized. And I get that. And I went into that, like, fully expecting to just agree with them and just be shocked. But there were, like, a lot of elements from the main overarching story to a few specific moments. Like, of course, I've already shared it before and I'm going to share it again. Ty Mitchell's amazing scene. And these just, like, made it so much better and almost like full on good and like I have been saying through uh, most of my porn reacts uh, through this latter part of the year is that I like the idea that porn can be more than just porn that it can tell a meaningful story that it can send a positive message that it could do something beyond just you know helping someone get their rocks off and A Murdered Heart definitely has its flaws and I feel like part of that is just because of the porn structure. But I feel like it did really, really good at trying to be conscious of the sensitivity of its subject matter and presenting it in a way that, you know, said, oh, this isn't just a fun fantasy setting, that there is some bad shit here, that there are things to worry about, that this is traumatizing. And, like, Ty Mitchell's scene is just tore at me the first time I watched it. It was so emotionally raw and his performance was so genuine and ah. Uh. Because you're trying to control my mind. So in case you succeed, I just wanted to make sure that there was some real me, some real memories that work out. No. Go 
As soon as we walked into his bedroom, he locked the door behind us. He threw me up against the door and started kissing me. This is my first. My hands felt over his entire body, just like I imagined, over and over, touching another guy like this. Go on, you think your father needs to eat this. I reached down into his pants and he was already hard. I grabbed his dick and could feel it throbbing in my hands. I looked him in his eyes and he nodded, so I dropped to my knees and pulled down his pants. I slid my hands to the tip and a drop of pre-cum came out, so I licked it off. It tasted sweet, warm. I wet his entire cock with my mouth before I slid it down my throat. I wanted to feel him inside me. I laid on my back. Enough. Stop. Sit up straight. This faggot bullshit is a weakness and I will not allow it in my house. Does that smell like a bag of hot nuts to you? Mark uh, commented on my repost, and he said I actually got it right. The cum shots were intentional, because I remember I noticed the only people who were getting facials in these scenes were the people that were full on out and proud. The two characters that are closeted are uh, three characters. That, well, yeah, the two characters that are closeted um, never get the cum shot on them. They, like, avoid it. But all the characters who were out or eventually come out, like the father, uh, ended up getting facials. And that just stuck with me for the weirdest reason. And then all of a sudden, like, I get this response from me saying, you actually got that right on the nose. And I'm just, I'm so validated. Like, that comment made me the happiest I was in a while. And I was just, like, grinning the whole day. <laughs> just grinning because I found subliminal messaging in cum shots. <laughs> But yeah, Murdered Heart really surprised me, and I'm actually happy that it's getting some recognition at the awards, and, like, my only major complaint with it, aside from, like, some of the dialogue just being a little bit too heavy and unnatural for, like, Angel and some things, uh, my only other complaint is I feel like at least someone involved in the conversion camp should have just been a pure dick, not closeted, because, you know, that whole idea generally that... Anyone homophobic is sort of closeted or like trying to repress themselves kind of turns the homophobia inwards because we're like, we're saying, oh yeah, it's a self-hating gay. It's a gay problem. It's not, you know, a straight problem. It's not a problem with prejudice. It's a gay problem. And that's something we do kind of have to get away from. So I would have liked it if at least one person in the conversion camp process notably could have been like just a dick. Not gay, not closeted, not repressing themselves. Just an asshole who genuinely believes the shitty stuff. Like, I love that I get positive feedback from him whenever I do those. And, like, I'm not going to pretend like it's all bestie bestie. Because, like, none of these are. It's just more like, you know, Twitter conversation. Like, casual stuff like that. And Ty Mitchell has been, like, just amazing for me. Because, like... I don't know, but I've loved reading his articles when he started doing digital publishing. That kind of was muddy water, but now he's doing something like on his own type thing, um, like focused on OnlyFans and his experiences in that. So I'm really enjoying that series. And so let's see, Ty Mitchell, uh, Cooper, those are two people that really have made a lot of impact on me and like make me happy to be following them. Um, other than them, let's see. Cocky boys in general. I know. 
I know I've done so many cocky boys videos already. I'm going to be doing another one real soon, actually. And like, I am just like really soaked into cocky boys. I feel like it started mainly with um, six feet apart, lips together, six feet apart, which was just a mind-blowingly gorgeous piece of cinema. It was like everything we needed and more in quarantine. And I am utterly in love with that storyline. And like when people say that porn can't be more than just sex, more than just like fake artificial fucking and nothing else, that feels like the scene I'm going to start showing people to say that because it has all these beautiful elements to it. Like it just sort of sticks out to me that like the only major complaint I ever had while I was doing my react to it was something with the sound mixing. It was the crickets. It was the crickets. Like there was a scene where one of them's outside. You hear crickets. The other one's staring like out the window close to it. And you hear the crickets at like the same volume, the same clarity. And it was just the tiniest niggle. I felt like for that camera position to work, the cap, the cricket should have been like a little muted. To like, because there's going to be some noise buffering there since the window was closed and all that. But it was so beautiful and wonderful that that's literally like the only thing I really could like point out as a flaw. Leo Grant in Hollywood Divide was so amazing. Like for his first performance, he really went all in on something like this. And it was so adorable. And he was like, he instantly put his stamp on everything. And I'm just really excited to see more stuff with him all the time and especially to i want to see like him be able to do something else like acting we're both bottoms baby boy why are you whispering we're the only ones here you know what i'm gonna help you take control you blackmailing me did i say you could speak no what i can't hear you no no what? No man. <laughs> Bad dog. Bad dog. Now kiss my foot. I didn't stutter. Lane Rogers and Chad Alec are two other people I would say I'm super thankful for. Because, okay, again, like, semi-casual, like, talky talk on Twitter, on Insta, now and again. But just like with Andrew, they started doing Twitch recently. Well, Lane started doing Twitch. Uh, Chad sort of played with it. And now I think Chad is actually going to be starting his own channel. So I'm super excited for that. That just, again, like, opens up a whole new avenue of, like, exploring them and be able to communicate with them openly and like get to know them and let them get to know me and types like that. So like, yeah, again, it's not like super friendly besties forever type stuff, but like having like Lane notice when I'm online and notice when I've posted on something more now has just been like an ah moment. And just in general, like, Again, I've said this before that I don't like spouting the words couple goals all over, like, because I feel like it puts a weird sort of pressure on them, and it's just sort of vaguely creepy, but I'm just going to say it like this. I feel like Lane and Chad are an amazing couple that really sets a wonderful standard, because they're not just a good couple. They're not just two beautifully organic people that naturally connect with each other and portray that so wonderfully in so many different ways. But they also have that sexual openness that I feel like we still make too taboo. And especially in the gay community where we sort of want to be accepted by straight people. So we want to be like straight passing in a sense you know, do the monogamy thing, do the commitment thing, do the weird toxic jealousy thing, and be able to see a gay couple that can balance a pure dedication to each other with sexual openness, with, you know, 
being able to integrate a porn career and a family life together. It's beautiful. And it's something I admire and look up to in so many ways. And I just am so happy to know people like that. And I can't wait to get to know them better, if that makes sense. So, jumping forward from them, uh, let's see here. Um, notables would probably be... Okay, I have to talk about Avery Jones. I literally have an Avery Jones React video coming out, like, soon. Probably as soon as I finish these Thanksgiving videos. But Avery Jones went above and beyond with everything. So, like, you know, I do this a lot. I find the porn people I like, and I just, like, comment. I make little posts. I, like integrate myself there and of course if I make a react video where there's a scene they're in I'll tag them and all that but like I don't feel like I ever like truly force myself and by the way if I do please let me know I do not want to be that person but I like tagged and commented and just did a few things with Avery and all of a sudden it was just like such a great little connection like, we spent a bunch of time just talking about, like, thrift stores and, like, where we'd like to shop and things like this. And since then, like, it's not always super long, detailed conversations. It's not all best buddies thing because or anything like that. But he is just genuinely so easy to communicate with. And he has this thing where it feels like he does want to talk to people. And there's a sort of joy and fun to it. And I love that. And it's really, like, made me feel comfortable and accepted. And it makes me excited, again, to do, like, my porn reacts. Because I am definitely feeling the positive input from that. And it just makes me so happy. And, like... <laughs> but yeah, Avery Jones is super, super sweet and special. And just, like, such a wonderful person. In fact, here's a few uh, clips of him being a wonderful person. But I remember specifically when I put my shoe up on the like ottoman thing, that wasn't planned. That wasn't in the script at all. And I literally wore like the dirtiest pair of sneakers that I had because I was trying to run out of the house. Like I had to get douched and get ready. And then I threw on a pair of sneakers and I remember just in the moment, I was like, I need to do something to like establish this. And I put it up there and I was like, no kiss my shoe. No kiss my foot. I didn't stutter. Cut. Hey, you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do one more like in the world? No, that was good. That was good. And I remember afterwards he was like, You made me kiss your dirty fucking shoe. <laughs> so that wasn't planned. <laughs> Not planned at all, but it was so funny. It was just like I kind of like tapped into Was he into actually that. upset or was he like laughing about oh, it? Oh no, it, it was it all, was you know, it was all in, you know, good intentions. All of in good porn fun. All in good porn fun. Probably the prettiest boy that I think I've ever laid eyes on is Leo. I think he's so beautiful. He's this cute little like ball of energy and it, he's just, he's so good. He's so good hearted. Like, girl. 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 <laughs> One more time. Just look at each other. Just be still, perfectly still. Lean in a little more, Chad. Lean in um, a little bit. Like you're just talking. So being in a role that was already so developed, but I was still such a new model to the company, mm -hmm. it was a little crazy, but it was... It was liberating. It was like I got to be a bad bitch and I didn't have to be apologetic about it and I didn't have to explain myself and I just got to walk in the room and it was like I commanded attention. Like, boom. It Damn. was like, I'm here. Other than Avery Jones, I'm trying to think because sometimes I end up like actually sort of forgetting someone is in porn when I've talked to them for a while and, you know, Chirac is an amazingly sweet dude. Like, he is very warm, very friendly, and, like, the best thing of all, he gets my humor, or at least he can, like, play along with it well enough, I guess. Because I, I have this thing where sometimes I just don't want to comment sexually on sexual posts, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. But, like, 
I'm not always horny. I'm not always like, you know, raring to go in that mood. So even though I see like their sexy pics, I see them posting a clip for their OnlyFans or for one of their major scenes and such. Like, I I just don't feel like there's much depth to just commenting and just saying, oh, fuck yeah, that's hot. Or, oh God, I wish that could be me. Most of the time I feel like everyone else is doing that. So it's just an echo chamber of the same kind of comment. So I have humorous comments. I like, well, look at stuff in the background. I'll talk about little things. I'll like, you know, just try to desexualize the sexual. And like, it's not so much I do it like on purpose all the time. It's more to like, I don't know. I can just like be sexually flatlined even when something sexy is happening. And it's not so much I don't find it sexy. It's just that if I'm not actually in the mood to be sexy, I like don't go crazy on the horned up thing, if that makes sense. But yeah, so like that just leads me to like naturally like be humorous, be silly, be like sort of casually like nonchalant when I'm commenting on porn posts. Sometimes it kind of goes over bad, and other times, like with Chirac, Avery Jones is really good at it, and uh, Ty Mitchell, I think, it gets it too, but, like, most of the time, they can get it and enjoy it and just, like, sort of see where I'm coming from. I've had a few occasions where it kind of went flat and didn't work out, but, oh well. Oh, Max Cotter has been so sweet, too. Max Cotter is an amazing guy, and I adore him. And I really love that he does put energy into putting out good messages. And, yeah, I made, like, a little birthday video for him, and he was like... Yeah, I I, I enjoy Max, too. Aw. But anyway, so, like, yeah, there's a lot of amazing people in porn, and... It's great to see them beyond the porn persona, beyond just being sex, beyond just being, you know, what the studio or what their OnlyFans requires them to be. Because pretty much all of these people in their own way get to show other aspects of themselves. Chirac is, you know, the plant-obsessed, uh, lizard-having, bird-keeping, uh, just amazing man that he is. Uh, Cooper, they are just an amazing political voice. They will speak up on any social injustice issue. They will speak up on any politically dangerous issue. And it's like, they don't give a fuck if they're going to lose followers because they're going to say what they really feel needs to be said. And I genuinely admire so many things about Cocky Boys. And there are some deeper, like, more uh, serious topics I'm going to be going into with porn later on. And Cocky Boys, for the most part, does end up standing out as being one of the better, if not perhaps loosely speaking, best studios in terms of how they handle certain issues. And also, too, like, Jake Jackson is an amazingly kind person, and <clears throat> same for RJ, and the few times I've had interactions with them, it has been so wholesome and sweet, and between that and their creative output and just the studio itself i'm incredibly proud to like even have the slightest knowledge of these people and uh, like there's so much good in the world and porn can be so much more than just smut and like i'm gonna keep doing videos about porn on youtube for as long as i can because I do feel like it's something we need to destigmatize. I feel like it's something we need to uplift and, like, be positive about. And the people like this are the ones who really, really make me feel this way. So to all of them, whether it's Ty Mitchell or Cooper or Max or Jake Jackson or Avery Jones, especially Avery Jones, because you cute boy. But all of them just make me so proud and so happy and so thankful. So yeah, 
this, this was my video uh, going over the people in porn I am thankful for. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And of course, remember, life always gets better as long as you work in it brick by brick. See ya in the next one.